Any issues with Brown wanting to lower the minimum game threshold for the end of the season awards? JJ, Mad Dog, I guess for me, and I, and I love Jalen Brown, I, I guess for me, it was the messenger more than the message. Okay. The person who just signed last summer the richest contract in the history of basketball, five years, $304 million, is talking about how less games played should still qualify you for some of the awards. Again, he may have a point. I just think it would have been better to hear from somebody other than him. Uh, if you're the view in public, you might take that wrong. Just for some stats, J.J., Mad Dog, last season, 16 of the 27 All-Stars played in at least 65 games. Five seasons ago, it was 21 of 27 All-Stars who played in at least 65 games. Ten years ago, 22 of 25 All-Star played in at least 65 games. That's 88%. 20 seasons ago, it was 22 of 24 All-Stars who played in at least 65 games. So from 20 years ago, it was 92%. 10 years ago, it was 88%. Five years ago, it was 78%. Now it's dipped to 59%. JJ, you do with those numbers whatever you will because I know some of the things you alluded to in the changes of basketball or whatever to educate our viewers and stuff like that. I just wanted to throw those numbers out there so you could take it from there. Go ahead. L listen, <clears throat> we talked a, a bunch about load management last year. Mm -hmm. And the NBA, uh, along with the union, they came up with these parameters around missing nationally televised games, who you could rest, when you could rest, all of that stuff. They came up with this threshold. I am a fan of all of this stuff, all right? The reality is we're, we're not going to see, we're not going to see star players and guys who play 38 minutes a night play 82 games. It, it, it's, it's close to impossible. Uh, I've touched on this before. The game is different. Players have to cover 15 to 20 percent more. There's more dynamic, dynamic movement as you're covering that space. There just is. There just is. Here's my issue with the 65 game threshold. I'm sorry. Here's my issue with the the the, the end of season awards being attached to financial incentives. Because I have no problem with the 65 game threshold. Let's. This is year one of this. Let's see how these new rules play out over three, four, five seasons. My, my big issue is this. If a team is willing to sign a rookie, a guy on his rookie contract to the Supermax extension, and that player hasn't made All-NBA yet, and there's that incentive clause, right? If you make All-NBA in your fourth year, then you get the extra $40, $50 million or whatever. It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't, because then it puts pressure on a player. In, in the case of Tyrese Halton, it puts pressure on him to come back too soon from a hand, hamstring injury because he's got to meet that threshold. He's not going to get it this year, right? So if you're willing to pay a player that over the course of five years, why, why would there not be incentives around making all NBA in year five or year six or year seven or year eight? That part of it doesn't make sense. Now, the union agreed to this. Right? Are the players agreed to this? They they agreed to this clause. That's the only issue I have with any any sort of games threshold, financial incentives tied to all NBA stuff. I just don't. Like, Tatum missed out on it as well. Jason Tatum missed out on it. Jason Tatum is one of the five or six best players in the NBA and has been for the past couple of seasons. He's made first two first team All NBAs in a row. I don't know that he'll make it this year, but he's made two first team All NBAs in a row. Yeah, I uh, listen. To me, more games is the answer, not less. They already missed 21%. You can miss 21% of your season and still win an MVP. If Brown goes down to 58 games, he's making $60 million a year. I only want to – really? $60 million? I mean, if, uh, he wants to play 58 games to win an MVP? That's 26% of the regular season.